Kelsey. This is my channel, The Fancy Hat Lady Reads. I am wearing one of my fancy booktube hats, and today I'm doing a sort of catch-up wrap-up. Um, you may be aware that over the last couple years there have been a lot of months for which I've not done full wrap-ups for all the books that I've read, and I want to try to rectify that, not necessarily by doing full wrap-ups for all those books, but at least like touching on the books that I haven't really talked about on my channel because some of them in the time since I read them I've definitely talked about them I've definitely recommended them in like recommendation videos in, in tag videos in five star reads of fill in the blank year lists they've come up in discussion and I feel like I've given you my recommendation for those books. Um, you have some idea of what I think of them. And so it took a while to actually go through my Goodreads records of all the books that I've read in the last few years and figure out which ones I haven't actually talked about. And I've done that now and I've sorted them into categories. Um, so I think I'll be able to do a fantasy a video, a science fiction video, a middle grade video, a story collection video, um, and maybe like a graphic novel and or miscellaneous video. Get through them in manageable chunks and not like torture myself anymore about trying to remember what it was I wanted to say to you. Either I will remember things or I won't. Mostly I'm going to just touch on what I remember about what I liked about the books or didn't, what rating I gave them, why I think I gave them that rating. I'm not going to try to do any sort of in-depth summary or description of the plots of the books or anything because I just don't remember those things for most of these books. So today's video is the fantasy novels video. This includes both adult and YA titles. It is one, two, three adult titles and two YA titles. The first two books are things that I actually read in early 2019, relatively early 2019, that were part of a five-star TBR predictions list that I had put together for myself, and I only ever read two of the five books on that list. I had intended to wrap them up as a batch when I finished them, but I never did, so I'm wrapping those two up here. The first is The Weight of Feathers by Anna Marie McLemore. I had thought that the debut novel of this author might be a five-star read for me because their more recent novels had been. This, I still enjoyed it, but it was a four-star read. This is basically a magical realism YA romance. I think you see some of the beautiful writing that Anna Marie McLemore is capable of. In this book, I think you see little bits of themes that they end up developing much more fully in later novels. One sort of gets the sense that this might have been their debut novel because it was deemed to be fairly marketable. It was. It got a lot of hype when it was released back in. Ooh, what year was this? I remember all the hype. It was 2015, my goodness. But this author has written much more interesting things since. Notably, this does not contain any of the queer rep that the rest of their novels that I've read do. This is about a boy and a girl who come from two uh, rival families of traveling performers with like some magical stuff going on. Uh, one of the families is a mermaid performer family and the other is an acrobat family with like a bird thing going on. There's definitely all of this like buried family history, the truth of which isn't what either of them has grown up believing. So this definitely has some excellent vibes and some lovely writing and I found that the uh, the story, the, the romance plot was something I could fall into pretty easily. It was a pretty quick read, but it didn't really stick with me like uh, When the Moon Was Ours or Wild Beauty or Blanca y Roja. This one I read in May of 2019, and then the other book from that 
uh, five star TBR predictions list that I read was also something from a favorite author of mine that ended up being a four star read and that is The Bards of Bone Plain by Patricia A. McKillop. This is an adult standalone fantasy novel. It is a dual narrative. You jump back and forth between these two storylines that take place in vastly different, you know, eras of history in this fantasy world. In the present day, the main character is Phelan. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that correctly, but he is um, in like his final phase of studies at the Bard School um, of this kingdom, and he is like trying to uh, figure out his topic for his like thesis or dissertation or whatever it is they call it in this book. And he wants to do his research on this legendary bard. And I think if I remember correctly, this is sort of considered by everyone he tells this to to be an overworn research topic that like he's not going to find out anything new on. He should come up with a research topic more original. The other characters in this present day plot line uh, include his father who is doing like archaeology digs and the princess of the kingdom with some unconventional interests who is uh, involved with uh, Phelan's father's archaeology projects. And then the past storyline is the story of the legendary bard Nairn. This wasn't, I think, the most compelling MacKillop book I've read in terms of either characters or plot or writing. Um, I think it can be a fairly frustrating read because ultimately when like the magic secrets seem to come to light they are still very shrouded in mystery, the past is still very shrouded in mystery. Um, I remember finishing this book and not being totally sure exactly what happened and feeling like we hadn't had the questions answered. But that is also the thing that I sort of appreciate about this book. It is about different eras in time and you're you're in this present day plot line where Nairn's plot line is like the ancient past um, which is too mysterious to ever fully comprehend but in Nairn's plot line it is of course the present and in that plot line there are these you know magical secrets this lost language of magic all of these things that from even then uh, are impossible to discern the true history and meaning of. And so you do get this sense that like time obscures the truth over multiple, you know, eras of history. I do like that in the present time it seems to be a little more modern than most fantasy of this type. It feels around like turn of the 20th century-ish in terms of technology. The princess has an automobile that's very exciting. If you like magical music stuff in your fantasy this might be for you. This is not one of my absolute favorite McKillop books that I've read, but I gave it four stars. And then the rest are things that I don't have print copies of. The next is Witch World by Andre Norton. This one I read on Kindle and I started reading it for um, the first round of the uh, Women Write Classic SFF readathon that Maya from Maya Reads hosted and then I didn't finish it during that readathon, so I didn't wrap it up with that readathon wrap up that I did. Um, this was my second try at reading Andre Norton, and I went into it with very low expectations because I did not like Cat's Eye. Also, I had just heard that this is not like the greatest book in terms of how well it holds up, so I was um, nervous going into this and because I went in with such low expectations I think I actually came out very pleasantly surprised. It is totally readable. It's fine. It's an entertaining fantasy, portal fantasy read. It's basically an adult portal fantasy. There is some mad scientist woo-woo about how the the portal to the world where you're going to belong is like science. It, 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 it's it's a portal fantasy. Our protagonist is a guy whose name I forget in our world. He's on the run from something, I forget what, and he ends up going, you know, escaping through 
the uh, the magic science portal to Witch World, which is, you know, absolutely a fantasy world. It's full of magic. I very strongly got the sense that Andre Norton was writing the type of book where she was trying to sneak some feminist themes and strong female characters into a book that she assumed would have to appeal to male readers primarily. I think she believed that was her primary audience and that she had to like sneak in her strong female characters as like subterfuge. So she gives us this premise that sounds very much like big strong male hero guy shows up to rescue the magical world full of sexy witch ladies, and then kind of does some backpedaling away from that as the book progresses. The character who is ultimately the love interest for our main guy is uh, presented as a, a damsel in distress that he rescues right at the beginning, but then after we're done with that awkward trope for the initial meeting between the two characters, she proceeds to go and be a very strong, competent, powerful character in her own right. And then their relationship develops on the basis of mutual trust in a way that was not entirely cringe. There's also a second point of view character who is a girl who shows up about halfway through the book. We switch to her POV. She is the daughter of a villain character. She runs away uh, disguised as a boy and teams up with our team of heroes in order to escape a terrible arranged marriage. I do think the book would have been stronger if it had kept her as a POV character through to the end of the book um, instead of just having her be the main character for this chunky interlude in the middle. Um, I think there are things that happen later in the book that would have been more interesting if we had seen them through her eyes. At least I remember thinking so at the time. I now of course cannot remember what those things are. Um, there is also towards the end some interesting uh, genre blendy stuff with the introduction of some sort of sci-fi technology um, that our protagonist, as someone from our world, he recognizes that this world he has come to is low tech, but that they rely on magic instead of tech. And so when he sees the sci-fi technology, um, he recognizes that that's something that is futuristic, high tech in a way that the other people around him don't recognize. I don't think that mystery is really solved in this book. It's definitely a first book in a series. I don't have any plan to continue on with book two. It didn't leave me feeling like I really wanted to continue the stories of these particular characters. If there were a second entry point to the Witch World universe at some point later in the series that wouldn't require reading the rest of these early novels to jump back into, I might consider trying a different book in this greater series, but I would need a recommendation. So I gave this three stars for being surprisingly readable with a number of pretty cringy tropes that I think can be chalked up to the time when it was written. Next was Empire of Sand by Tasha Suri. This, I think I read this because uh, Tasha Suri was nominated for the Astounding Award? Question mark? I read this in July of 2020. I don't know if I forgot to say I read Witch World in April of 2020. And I listened to it on audio and that was a mistake. And I knew it was a mistake as soon as I started um, because I recognized immediately the audiobook narrator as someone who I had not enjoyed her narration of a previous book. And I honestly have no interest in sitting here and like bashing an audiobook narrator's work to the internet. It doesn't make me feel good. I will say I think Sunila Nankani was better cast reading 
this book and this style of writing than she was for Aru Shah um, because this is much more moody and angsty and I think she really leans into that with everything she does. I, she basically, as far as I can tell, only has like one mode um, in terms of mood and that is like angst. Um, and, and there's definitely some of that in this book, so it worked much better than the comedy in Arusha did. I don't know if I would have enjoyed more of the things that I've heard people praise about this book that made me think I was going to like it um, if I had read it in print. I think it might be the case, but I... I don't know. That would be the writing style, the world building, um, the mythology, and to a certain extent also maybe the characters and the romance. This is an adult fantasy novel that definitely has YA crossover appeal. The comp titles that were used for this in marketing were City of Brass and The Wrath and the Dawn. I think those are both appropriate comp titles in terms of writing style. This is set in a South Asian inspired fantasy world. Um, the protagonist is quite young and naive, which I think lends itself to the feeling that this is a more YA-leaning adult novel. She is a member of a persecuted ethnic and religious minority on her mother's side, who has been raised to be very sheltered and protected by her powerful father. She, at the beginning, does not feel like life has been dealing her a fair hand. She um, comes into conflict with her stepmother a lot, and she ends up doing something fairly unconsidered that gets her in some real trouble, um, so she finally understands too late how good she really had it. She gets forced into a really scary marriage as a result and is whisked away to this, I don't remember what, what they call it, it's like a a temple community thing in the desert. Anyways, most of the book takes place within this fairly enclosed ecosystem of this, you know, religious order whose purpose is tied to the government and there's some nefarious magical stuff going on that uh, explains why they need people like our protagonist whose name is Mare and her now husband. So, the thing that I think I had heard hyped up most about this book before I read it was the romance. Like, people love this ship. And I will be honest with you, it is just not a, a romance dynamic that I particularly enjoy. It's very angsty. I want to be clear, I don't feel like this is a particularly like problematic or bad romance in any way. It's just not romance tropes that I personally enjoy. It's, you know, strong-headed, determined female protagonist versus, you know, broody, misunderstood love interest who's a tortured soul. So like after having heard the romance gushed over so much, I was personally disappointed to find out that it w was just a ship dynamic I'm not personally into. That said, the world building's pretty cool, especially with the, the magic and the gods that are asleep and dreaming and their dreams are powerful and um, the dance that uh, is based, I think, on traditional Indian dance, but that is, you know, tied to mares spirituality and religious practice and how that relates to the magic. I would have liked to actually see more of the world, more of this empire that the book is about. The whole book does pretty much take place in a very contained space. You don't actually see most of the empire, you mostly hear about it. Um, I'm definitely open to reading the companion sequel novel, which is Realm of Ash, um, that follows Mare's younger sister. This series is called The Books of Amba. There are two books. It's a duology. Um, but I don't know if I would rather read that one or if I would rather read The Jasmine Throne, which is Tasha Suri's newer book. 
um, that is unrelated to this series. If you've read both Realm of Ash and The Jasmine Throne, do let me know which you think I'd be more likely to enjoy. And then in June of 2020, I guess I'm backing up from July because I wrote these down in the wrong order on my notepad, uh, the last book I'm going to talk about is The Gilded Wolves by Roshni Chokshi. This is a YA novel, the first in a series, that I read because it was nominated for the BookTube SFF Awards, and it was another three stars for me. This is one of those YA fantasy series starters that I, I just thought was all right. It definitely has some strong concepts and ideas. This is a historical fantasy heist novel that takes place in like turn of the century Paris but alternate history with lots of magic. There is so much going on in this book that I have forgotten most of it. Um, there are these powerful magical societies that are possibly safeguarding powerful artifacts or something. There's definitely commentary that you can tell is going to be a big part of the overall story arc of the series about, um, you know, colonialism and power as it relates to, you know, who holds and owns the magical whatnots. I forget what the magical whatnots are. There's a very culturally diverse team of protagonists and definitely a uh, running theme of how all of them are perceived versus the the truths of their own lived experiences. But here is the main thing that I think about this book. I think it needed to be like a hundred pages longer and I think it needed to be a hundred pages longer of like filling it out. Um, there's a lot of plot, there's a lot of world building, a lot of plot, and a lot of characters, and it's a pretty short book. Let me, let me check the page length of this book to, to back up this claim. The hardcover is 388 pages, um, and that is YA pages with pretty big text. I think this easily could have been a hundred pages longer. Um, and given us more time to get to know all of the characters, um, to understand how the magic is actually part of this world, to basically do everything that a book has to do in order to get you to care other than plot, because this like throws you right into all of the big like heisty plot right from the start and it never lets up. That was how I felt. I also felt here and there that there were a few scenes where just like there needed to be extra sentences in there to connect point A and point B because otherwise you're, you j just jumped over a thing. This feels like a book where someone took a draft and did a really ruthless edit on it to like cut it down in length and I don't know why. I think this book wanted to be way more character driven than it ended up being. Um, Maybe this is me as an adult reader where I, I want a ton more nuance with my characters than I think I particularly knew to want as a younger reader. But some of these characters have some pretty outrageous backstories and um, you're sort of supposed to just accept it and never supposed to actually question like, well, how how does your day-to-day -day life actually work, little character you? Because I do not understand how you're actually living the life that you're living. Likewise with the way all of the magical craftsmanship works in this book, I think there could have been much more um, examination of how those different magical skills being used in society would shape the world differently from how our world has been shaped. Basically a lot of things I just wanted more of an exploration of. Um, and that's the thing, when I read a book where I come to the end of it not necessarily mad at any of the things that were in the book, but wanting more things 
added to it that weren't in the book. I, I can't say that was a bad book. I can't say I disliked it. I just told you I would have willingly read a hundred more pages of it if those hundred pages made it better. I will say though the one thing that bugged me and I think this is a sort of genre specific trope thing where I'm not familiar with any of the popular pieces of media that do this, that this book is, I think, intentionally drawing on and supposed to make you reminiscent of, is the thing where historical artifacts have these little puzzles. And uh, after you stare at the historical artifact for a while, the puzzle will reveal itself. And if you're smart enough, you'll figure it out like right in the last minute and the secret will be told to you. That, that, that's not how archaeology works. That's not how any of it works. I don't buy it. Regardless, if that's a trope you like, maybe you'll like this book a little better than I did. So three stars. I um, ended it not really enthused to continue on with the series in part because I, I didn't like the direction it looked like the main romance plot line was going. Again, more more angsty romance tropes that I don't like. Anyhow, that's finally all of the fantasy books that I have read that I don't think I've ever talked about having read on this channel. Stay tuned for more wrap-ups, um, more recent books, books I read less recently, Anyhow, I hope you're having a nice day. Let me know if you've read any of these or what you think. That is all. Bye for now.